Hi everyone, I hope you're having a great day. My name's Jack and I'm a volunteer, and today I'm gonna to be reading four stories about the stars and the moon. The first book we have today is called Stars by Mary Lynn Ray and Marla Frazee. A star is how you know it's almost night. As soon as you see one, there's another and another. And the dark that comes doesn't feel so dark. What if you could have a star? They shine like little silver eggs you could gather in a basket, except you know you can't, not really. But you can draw a star on shiny paper and cut around it. Then you can put it in your pocket. Having a star in your pocket is like having your best rock in your pocket, but different, because a star is different from a rock. Pin a star in your shirt and you can be sheriff. Put a star on a stick and you've made a wand. If you hold the wand the right way, you might see a wish come true. Not always, only sometimes. You never know about a wish. You can give a star to a friend, but never give away the one you keep in your pocket. You need to know it's there. Some days you feel shiny like a star. If you've done something important, people may call you a star, but some days you don't feel shiny. Those days, it's good to reach in your pocket for the one you keep there. If you ever lose your star, you can draw another, or you can find one. There are places. Moss where you might see fairies is made of green stars. White stars in June grass become strawberries in July. Yellow stars on pumpkin vines become October pumpkins. Snowflakes are stars. Blow a ball of dandelion and you blow a thousand stars into the sky. A button can have a star on it. And if you always brush your teeth, someone might give you a red or green or blue or gold or silver star. There might be a star on the calendar to mark a special day. But stars that come with night, for those you have to wait for night. You need some dark to see them. It may help to have on pajamas. Then you look up. Almost always you will find one. And another, and another, and another. And if sometimes you can't see them, they're still there. Every night. I hope you guys enjoyed our first book. The second book we're gonna be reading today is called Kitten's First Full Moon by Kevin Hanks. Kitten's First Full Moon. It was Kitten's first full moon. When she saw it, she thought, there's a little bowl of milk in the sky. And she wanted it. So she closed her eyes and stretched her neck and opened her mouth and licked. But Kitten only ended up with a bug on her tongue. Poor Kitten. Still, there was a little bowl of milk just waiting. So she pulled herself together and wiggled, to, wiggled her bottom and sprang from the top step of the porch. The Kitten only tumbled, bumping her nose and banging her ear and pinching her tail. Poor Kitten. Still, there was a little bowl of milk, just waiting. So she chased it down the sidewalk, through the garden, past the field, and by the pond. But Kitten never seemed to get closer. Poor Kitten. Still, there was a little bowl of milk, just waiting.
So she ran to the tallest tree she could find, and she climbed and climbed and climbed to the very top. But Kitten still couldn't reach the bowl of milk, and now she was scared. Poor Kitten, what could she do? Then, in the pond, Kitten saw another bowl of milk, and it was bigger. What a night! So she raced down the tree and raced through the grass and raced to the edge of the pond. She leaped with all her might. Poor kitten. She was wet and sad and tired and hungry. So she went back home and there was a great big bowl of milk on the porch. Just waiting for her. Lucky Kitten. I hope everyone enjoyed Kitten's first full moon, and the next book we're going to be reading is Dance by the Light of the Moon by Joanne Ryder and illustrated by Guy Francis. Dear Buffalo Gal, can't you come out tonight and dance by the light of the moon? Shh, it's a surprise! Buffalo Flo has an elegant bow, a grand sash that flows from her head to her toes. In her bow, light and loose, lovely flow calls to goose, a dance by the light of the moon. Gertie Mae Goose sports a new pair of shoes with wrap tapping taps and crisscrossing straps. In her snazzy black flats, Gertie Mae honks the cat. Come dance by the light of the moon. Cassie Sue Cat dons her flip floppy hat, drifting flowers and lace. What style, what grace! With a flourish and jig, Cassie Sue purrs to pig. We'll dance by the light of the moon. Patty Ann Pig picks the prettiest wig, and her long silky curls float around as she twirls. Patty Ann joins her pals, and she oinks to the gals. Let's dance by the light of the moon. Gals from the farm stroll on by, arm in arm. They glide to the glen, but where are the men? How could they be late for a toe-tapping date? Come dance by the light of the moon. Buddies and boys, show yourselves, make some noise. These gals are our sight and the mood feels just right. Hey boys, don't waste time when the evening is fine for a dance by the light of the moon. Here are the guys, they're in trousers and ties. They've got flowers in hand and they look really grand. Gentle guys, you've done great. Now sweet cows, pick your date and dance by the light of the moon. I've got my banjo, yells old farmer Snow. Gals and guys, give a cheer now that everyone's here. It's a party for you, for my friends good and true. Go dance by the light of the moon. They danced by the light of the moon. I hope everyone liked Dance by the Light of the Moon. And our last and final book is going to be Polar Bear Night by Laura Thompson and pictured by Stephen Savage. Polar Bear Night. The night is keen and cold. Snug inside her warm den, a polar bear cub wakes. Something in the moonlight stillness quietly beckons. What is it? The little cub leaves her warm, soft mother so deep asleep. She sets out for the snow and sky and sea and ice and the moon follows. Quietly, the little cub creeps across the snow, watching, listening. All the others are asleep. She sees the walrus. He is sleeping. She sees the seals. They are all sleeping. She sees the whales. 
They are swimming as they sleep. Farther and farther, the polar bear cub walks, watching, listening. Where is she going? What will she find? The little bear climbs high upon a mountain of snow. There she waits, wondering, and the moon waits with her. Then the stars begin to stir. Over here, stars soft are softly falling. Over there, too. It is the star shower. The stars are like snowflakes, falling, falling. They light up the snow and the ice. They light up the lapping waves of the sea. They light up the walrus and the seals and the whales. They light up the bear's cub, the bear cub's warm, snug den and her soft, sleeping mother. They light up everything the little bear loves and the little bear shines bright with light too. One by one, the stars stop falling. Soon they are still again, shining upon the little bear, shining as they sleep. Now the polar bear cub is ready for sleep too. She makes her way back through the keen, clear night and the moon follows. Snow and sky and sea and ice and mother bear's soft, warm fur. Home. That was our last book. I had a great time during the story time and I hope everyone has a great rest of their day. Bye.